to keep that going to make us more conducive to to producing in a in a lean yeah type yeah. way and, and that's another issue I know that you deal with on a, on a regular basis and the other thing is workforce development we we talk a lot about career pathways uh, it's it's a it's a two-way street the way I look at it uh, our K through 12 educators will benefit in, in, in working with their students to keep them involved because manufacturing has changed Jim as you as you well oh, know yes. uh, it's not like it was when when you and I were coming out of no, high school no. I know I know for <laughs> yeah. sure in, in my case that that's the case but anyway um, it's 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 to let students know that there are good jobs in manufacturing out there. Uh, we do a wage survey, wage and benefit mm -hmm. survey every year. Uh, your local chamber again, as uh, I've mentioned, uh, participates in that with us and we do that statewide. There are manufacturing jobs across the state average that pay over 20 to $25 right. an hour plus another 25 percent in benefits mm -hmm. that people don't realize. Now that's from top to bottom and it's you know not every manufacturer out there is paying that but that's good for Kentucky that, that's good for our overall uh, uh, well-being and, and, and economy for for sure as well as you know the spin-off jobs from that right. but but as the workforce de is developed the quicker they they can come out of high school if they're not going to go on and get a, a four-year degree they have the ability to know that their jobs out there, if they continue their education in the technical fields and the ability to interact in, in, uh, within the uh, factory workforces, mm -hmm. manufacturing workforces, which you're, you're very aware of. I really don't believe a student waits, Jim, till they're 16 and decide to drop out. Yeah, I think that occurs over a period of time. It's, it's a, it's a, 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 we all mature differently. We have different backgrounds, experiences, and so things interplay in that as we're going through the, through through the school system. And so, if you if in the days when when everybody was just pushing for for a four year degree, which is very very mm -hmm. very important. Okay, I mean all of that is very very important. And you just sit there, and you're in the fifth and sixth grade, and you're struggling a little bit, and you think, well, I'm not going to ever have enough money, or I'm not ever going to be in a, in a situation where I can become a doctor, or a lawyer, or an engineer, or whatever. Then the desire to, to get that basic education and to, and to grow begins to ebb a little bit. Not mm -hmm. in every case, but in, in, in a certain segment of that. And so by the time you get on into high school, you're not working as hard to get the basics and, 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 the, and the skills that you need to be able to communicate uh, work ethic, the ability, right. all of those types of things. And so, so that does two things. It, it creates a system where, where a student may decide that, they're, that the only thing they can do is, uh, is flip hamburgers, so to speak. Nothing wrong right. with flipping hamburgers. I've, I used to run a little uh, uh, K&N root beer stand, so I flipped many of them my, myself. But uh, but uh, uh, so they don't have to work as hard mm -hmm. to get that education. How does how does K through 12? How does our Department of Education? How does our society succeed if we can get that notion in there that that if you work hard enough that and and can get a good job out there, then that's going to drive those test scores up. Mm -hmm. That helps all the way through the school system, and so we're we're a big believer in that. Cam is also a big. Uh, 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 partnership with KCTCS, which I know you're part mm -hmm. of. Uh, our ability to work with them on, on these issues is beginning to, to grow. Uh, we've introduced a bill in the last session of General Bill Assembly, it was Senate Bill 28, we didn't introduce it, mm -hmm. but Senator Jack Westwood mm -hmm. up in Northern Kentucky did, which does this very thing, begins to integrate within our school system this career pathway approach, which we think is going to d just pay dividend after dividend to our mm -hmm. manufacturers with students coming out. Yeah. We weren't successful in getting it through with all the budget issues and everything right. going on, right. but we are going to continue to pursue that. Yeah. Yeah, things don't happen overnight when you're dealing with the legislature, and especially the economic times that we're under right now. Uh, you know, new programs are or don't get it the same priority as the programs that are already in existence. So. Right. I'll tell you a little story. I, I was watching uh, uh, the, I believe, I don't know if it was the uh, State of the Nation address or whatever it was with President Obama of 
shortly after he came on board as our new president of the United States. But I'm sitting there uh, watching that, you know, and the, all the interaction and everything. And when he got into economic development, he threw that same words out, career pathways. Mm. I, it mm. just, you know, went, went. I thought, yeah. great, you know, right. that, that concept right. and everything is, is something that we really need to, to be fo focused on, uh, I believe, not only as a state, but nationally. Okay. Well, you mentioned spinoff, and maybe we can wrap, wrap our discussion up with that, because manufacturing does play a, a very key role here in the Commonwealth, and not just because of what those jobs bring, uh, to the people that are working here and, and to our economy, but the spinoffs that take place uh, with those jobs. Uh, I understand there's like three jobs spin off from every manufacturing job that we have. What a tremendous boost for the economy. If, if manufacturing downsizes, then that has a ripple effect through the entire economy. And conversely, we grow manufacturing, it has a positive effect. Yeah, there's, there's there's no question about it, and I think this region right here is is a great example. You know, there are pockets in Kentucky that are suffering more than 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 this region is suffering. You know, mm -hmm. and and a lot of that has to do with the, with the with the manufacturing sector that is sitting here, because there are just tremendous amounts of jobs that spin off from that. Healthcare. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, how that that's an industry in itself. Right. Okay, uh, 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 insurance, uh, real estate, that's an industry in itself. Oh, sure. Construction that, that goes along with that. Uh, legal, all of those aspects go around it. So I, th I think the figures are well documented, not only in Kentucky, but nationally, that three to one is, is, a, is a fair and, and equitable thing that manufacturing creates in spinoff mm -hmm. jobs. The aspect that I think is, is, is really becoming exciting for me because there, I think there's a notion out there that manufacturing is dying. Number one, that it's not glamorous. You know, yeah. we've, we've developed that notion as a society. Number two, after NAFTA, the exodus of manufacturing jobs away from uh, uh, the United States. Uh, I was asked up in Maysville a few weeks ago when I was making a presentation, would NAFTA be overturned? And no, it's not going to be overturned. We're in a global economy now. But it, I, I don't know if you've seen the news just recently, but I get reports every day. Uh, in China, they're having an uprising from their uh, employees. Mm -hmm. They want a better standard of living. Sure. Okay. Sure. Right now, they're kicking our tiny, so mm -hmm. to speak. Yeah. On, on on what they pay their employees compared to what we pay ours. Okay. We're we're now have developed a a manufacturing society that is very competitive on quality. Mm -hmm. We're we're our products are are very competitive. We have energy. That right now, if if we can maintain ourselves, it's going to keep us. Uh, uh, above on that. So as we be, have be developed into a competitive manufacturing component here in the United States and here in Kentucky, the, the door is wide open for us as, as these other industrialized, under-industrialized countries, as they developed, develop into that and their, their desire to have a better quality of life, then we can compete. And I think, I think you will exactly. see us going forward uh, uh, growth in that area. So I yeah. With Kentucky's uh, GDP being centrist to, to manufacturing, I think it's a, it inherent upon us to continue to drive those issues in that regard. Okay. Well, this has been a great conversation. I'm glad you were able to join us today, Greg. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it very, very much. I, hey. I always enjoy my visits here, and you know, I'm going to take the advantage of, of going on further, a little further west. Uh, uh, this afternoon and get back into old fancy farm in Kentucky and <laughs> have a good time. We're having a wedding there this weekend and, and so I'm excited about all that. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's our program for today. Join us again next time when I will be talking about planning to succeed. If you want more information about our Workforce Solutions Program, you can call 901-1000 or contact me at jimk.lewis at kctcs.edu. Thank you.